Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to be looking at my scatterplot graph that I made. It is very similar to the one they made because I don't know what else, what other data to grab besides the data that they provide. So what theirs looks like is like this, doping professional bicycle racing. And then when you hover over it, it gives you more information on that person. And basically, I'm just going to go through like the logic behind how to do this. I'm not actually going to go step by step through how to do it. And I was also thinking that I would kind of skip the other D3 challenges and then just go right on to APIs and microservices just because I'm not really liking D3 very much. And a lot of it is kind of repetitive. And I don't really know like what more to add to these because I can't find like better data than what they have provided. So that's why I'm going to skip the, the other three and then go right on to APIs and then hopefully I can figure those out and make tutorials for them as well. So with the scatter plot graph, let's see what I made here. I used React, so I I brought in the script tags for React. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I like to use React and I bring in the CDN versions of it. So yeah, I bring in Re React, React DOM here, bring in Babel, and then I set my source to be the J JavaScript file and the type to be text Babel. To use D3, I set up a CDN script tag for D3. And then inside of our JavaScript file, we're actually using React. So our app component, we're using functional components here. And we have one piece of state. We have a use effect to grab our data. And then we set our data by once we grab it with a fetch function. And then we use that data and we put it into this other functional component called bar chart, which is down here, and it takes in the data that we fetched. And then I basically copied a lot of this from the project up here, the scatter plot one, because I can just change view and look at the editor's view. And so yeah, I basically copied a lot of this into here. So basically we define our axes first by doing the x dot domain and d3.scale linear, grab its range, make its domain. And then we have to change up this time format so that the times can de be displayed. Oh, also, I should probably start this so you can see that it actually works. Open with live server. And yeah, it's the same as this one except different colors. Hover over it, it's the same thing. We define the div for the tooltips that start with opacity of zero, so they're hidden. We can't see them, we just see through them. We define the SVG that we actually display the graph on, and we give it the height and width that it needs to display. And then we make the axes with by appending a G group onto it. So the X axis would be this one, which is the years. And basically we call that with X axis. So we do dot call X axis, which is this variable right here, which takes in our X, which is up here that has the domain and range of our year. So basically it takes the minimum year, sets that as its starting one, and then the maximum year is the ending one. So that's how we get from 1993 to 2016. So 1993 is the minimum year and 2016 is the maximum. Well, actually it's plus one and minus one. So actually it'd be 1994 because we do minus one and plus one. So yeah, that X gets put into axis bottom. Not really sure what, oh yeah, tick format probably gives it the lines. So these little lines maybe. I don't know. And then we call the x-axis onto this group, position it correctly, and then we have our x-axis. We kind of do the same thing for the y-axis. It gets put in here, we create the y, and we have to display the time so that it actually displays the time correctly. So that's why we had to do this. This right here is just the text surrounding it. So time in minutes would be this text right here, time in minutes. We're able to transform and rotate it 90 degrees. And then we actually put in our data points after that. So we have our dot class, which actually makes our circles. And then we enter in our data and then we're able to make a, a circle. So append a circle onto our SVG, which has a radius of six. Its X position is in that year. The Y position is at the time. Not really sure what data X value and data Y value are. The fill is the color, so if they did dope, then it's red, otherwise it's orange or something like that. If it's orange, then there's no doping allegations. If it's red, then there are. On mouse over, that's where we actually change the opacity of our div to 0.9 so we can actually see it. And then it also follows the mouse, so it changes the position of it based on our mouse by doing d3.event.pageX. It tracks where our mouse is. And then same thing for the Y. So if I change this to like minus 128, and now it's like way up when it should be closer to my mouse. 
So if I change that back, now it's next to my mouse. And then yeah, on mouse out, then it changes back to zero opacity. So we can see through it again and it's hidden. Here's the title text, doping in professional bicycle racing. The subtitle, 35 fastest times, and that's this part up here. The next part is the legend, which is this, these no doping and riders with doping allegations. And that's basically just another G that's positioned and labeled correctly. Basically, we're doing both of them at once by having the data be there are two colors that we want them to be. And then we're appending the rectangles on, giving them a height and width, giving them the X positioning, filling it with the correct color, and then we're having the text as well. And then if the color is red, then it has this text on it. Otherwise, it has the no doping allegations text on it. And then at the end of this function, we return our SVG. And then that gets put inside of our bar chart that we render onto the page with app. Hopefully, I explained that pretty well. D3 is really confusing, and I don't like using it at all. So <laughs> that's why I'm skipping those ones. And hopefully I'll have a lot more fun doing the API stuff, which should be a lot more fun because I think I know what I'm doing with APIs, at least hopefully. So D3 was a little new to me and that's why it's, uh, I don't know, it's hard and I don't really like it very much. So I know I haven't posted in a while as well. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.